Hey guys, do you remember the AMD Sempron processor? Today we're checking out the AMD Sempron 3100 Plus. This is the original launch Sempron CPU for the Socket 754. We will test Windows XP, Windows 98 as well as MS-DOS. So the AMD Sempron launched in 2004 for two sockets, for Socket A as well as Socket 754. And in this video we will check out the Socket 754 version. The Sempron 3100 Plus has the Paris Core. It's built on a 130 nanometer process, runs at 1800 megahertz, has 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache and a single channel DDR memory controller. Compared to the Athlon 64, it's marketed as a budget CPU. It also does not support the 64-bit instructions. These are all the components we're using for this project. We have a Gigabyte Socket 754 mainboard with a VIA chipset. The AMD Sempron 3100 Plus. And thank you to Thermal Grizzly. They sent us one of their carbon-out thermal pads so we're using this in this project we have an amd boxed cooler for ram for windows xp we're using two gigabytes of dual channel memory ddr400 for windows 98 and dos a 256 megabyte module for storage windows xp we have a team group t create one terabyte ssd for windows 98 and for dos we're using a sd card it's a sandisk uh, ultra with 32 sorry sandisk extreme with 32 gigabytes of storage for the graphics we have the ati fire gl the x3256 but for this video just think of this video card as a x800 pro we will take a closer look and in a future video and we have a sound card the good old sound blaster live and a asus 750 watt power supply we will test Windows 98 and DOS a little bit later, so let's begin with installing Windows XP. I tried using the Win setup from USB project, however, we're getting USB 1 speeds way too slow, so I ended up connecting an optical disk drive and installing from the good old CD. For the drivers, we're using the Snappy Driver Installer Origin project and Usually I deselect the graphics and the audio, but for this project, I select installing all the drivers. And of course it fails to boot. That's what you get for changing your own process. So the fix is easy. I choose last known good configuration and then manually I install the latest Fire GL drivers from the AMD website. Let's test some games. Here we have Far Cry with the maximum details and we can see the performance across various resolutions. We're basically getting the same performance at each resolution and that means we are CPU bottlenecked. So the processor is holding back the performance in this game. In Half-Life 2 we see something else. Here the graphics card is the bottleneck. As we increase resolution the performance goes down. In Fear we can see a similar picture. This is with maximum details but no anti-aliasing and no soft shadows. At 640 by 480 we're getting 66 FPS but as we increase resolution the performance just goes downhill. So under Windows XP I believe there are several bottlenecks. In some games the processor might be holding things back but in other games it might be the video card. Because we're using an HUP system, there are not too many high performance HUP graphics cards that are easily obtainable, so keep that in mind. But for early era Windows XP games, this system should be perfectly capable. Now we are using Windows 98. I have to go into the BIOS and make a few changes. I'm disabling the SATA controller and we're using a ID to SD card adapter as well as downsizing the RAM to 256 megabytes. Here we have incoming and look at the performance over 300 FPS. That is absolutely outstanding. Doesn't matter what resolution we're using, we're getting excellent FPS. We can see the same in expendable 157 FPS. Even at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 153 FPS. So it seems this system, this processor is outstanding for Windows 98. And we have another Windows 98 game, this is Draycan, 142 FPS at 640 by 480 
and 141 fps at 1600 by 1200 you have to be impressed with that that is outstanding performance I also ran 3D Mark 99 Max and look at that 18,892 as well as 39,640. These are excellent results. MS DOS performance is also excellent. I have two results for you the PC Player Benchmark 339 FPS and Quake runs at 269 FPS. So this is an outstanding system for MS DOS. A lot of DOS games are speed sensitive and we can do a couple of things. We can go into the bars down clock the CPU through the multiplier to 1000 megahertz to make it a little bit more compatible. We can also lower the RAM speed to 100 megahertz and then we can use set mul to disable the onboard CPU cache and look at that 3D bench gets a score of 28.3 which is a basic 486 uh, equivalent uh, in terms of performance. So yes, by toggling a few options in the bars and using set mal, we can turn this into a really excellent DOS machine that's compatible with speed sensitive games as well. So the Sempron 3100 Plus is not a bad processor, but can it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis running at 800 by 600 resolution. We do get a warning initially that the video card is not supported, but the game launches just fine. I set all the details too low to give this system a fighting chance and yeah, it's smooth, it's playable. Wow, what a surprise. Yes, it does run Crisis. So guys, what is my take on the AMD Sempron 3100 Plus? For late Windows XP era games, the processor is a little bit underpowered, but it is capable with early Windows XP games. It is extremely capable under Windows 98 and also under MS-DOS with the caches disabled, even compatible with speed sensitive games. So I see this processor really handy for any uh, hybrid projects or crossover projects. For example, if you wanna build a triple operating system machine covering DOS, Windows 98 and Windows XP, this is a really good CPU. In general, the Socket 754 is shaping to be one of my favorite retro platforms. Very flexible, compatible with PCI DOS sound cards and lots of CPUs are available and prices should not be too high. Going forward, if you're interested in more Sempron CPU videos, I have a couple of 754 CPUs. This is my stash, so we can definitely do some more videos and I definitely want to check out the ATI Radeon Fire GL. This is the X3256. This could also be very interesting. In this video we just briefly used it for this project but I think this card deserves a dedicated video. I have two videos for you to check out. The first one is the top CPU for the Socket 754 and the other one covers building a retro gaming PC with the Socket A platform. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I shall see you soon with another one.